Nilipokuwa niko nyumbani nilikuwa ninasoma. Lakini sikumaliza. Nilikuwa nataka mvulana na nikapata. Sasa nilipopata mvulana ndo nikaolewa. Sasa nilipokuja huku nilikuwa sina kazi. Shule siendi ndo nilikuwa nishaolewa tayari. Nilipopata mtoto nilikuwa niko hapo nyumbani nyumbani stoki. Niko hapo hapo. Nilikuwa stoki hata kufika huku madukani. Lakini nilipopata ile shirika ninashukuru kwenye nilitoa. County is one of the five counties that harbor the Kenyan coast. The county has seven sub-counties, namely Kilifi North, Kilifi South, Ganze, Malindi, Rabai, Kaloleni, and Magarini. Many young people in Kilifi are sexually active, with a median age of fast sexual intercourse reported to be 18.4 years for females and slightly lower, 17.7 .7 years for males. Access to and use of modern methods of contraception in the county is also very low. In 2014, only 20% of adolescent girls between the ages of 15 and 19 were using contraceptives. A large majority, 59% of these adolescents, did not have access to contraceptives when they needed them. There are a number of reasons for this particularly high rate of unmet need in Kilifi County. As one of the poorest counties in the country, poverty rates are triple the national average. Healthcare facilities are located far from where girls reside. 80% of the county is rural, and only 13% of residents have secondary level education. Social and cultural norms dictate that girls prove their fertility early, placing messages about contraception at odds with what society expects of them. Most complex, however, is a link, or lack thereof, that girls and their families make between poverty and childbearing. With such deep levels of poverty, girls are more worried about sourcing for their next meal, not their sexual and reproductive health. There are also a lot of myths and misconceptions about contraception. With few job opportunities or examples of how to break out of poverty, rates of transactional sex Sex in exchange for money or goods are high among girls and young women. Furthermore, Pendo and her peers see motherhood as the only certain way of gaining status in their communities. Without an alternative, such as the ability to bring an income for their family, messages about preventing pregnancy don't resonate. Kenya. Kenya, in collaboration with Kalifi County Ministry of Health and other partners, combined the best ideas from the global evidence base PSI has built around adolescent and youth sexual and reproductive health and economic empowerment with new evidence generated through Maverick Next Investment to design and test a bust of innovations, prototypes around economic empowerment and adolescent and youth sexual reproductive health integration together with the young mothers, Pendos, in Kilifi County, Kenya. I've been overseeing the implementation of Maverick Next program, dubbed Binti Biashara. The program uses human-centered design approach to engage with a target audience. And the target audience here is uh, the girl we call Pendo. Pendo is a girl who is a mother of one or two children and uh, could be married or unmarried and lives within Magarini sub-county. The human-centered design intends to ensure that the overall outcome of the project puts the target audience at the center of it. Hence, whenever we initiate the process, we have to do sort of landscape mapping and see where the pain point lies and whether it relates to the target audience we want to focus on. And we're here in Kalifi County 
Um, today we got to do a formal session with the girls. Um, there's a team from PS Kenya and you can just tell they're really excited. They're really hungry to change their futures. They're really motivated. Um, I think it's really impactful to see, um, we knew we we're helping young girls and mothers, but extremely impactful to see really how young the mothers are. Um, that's really not something that you can conceptualize until you put your feet on the ground. What we're doing here is really help the girls build their skills by through mentorship. Some of them, we also support them to go to TVET institutions. And with that, it's a very clear pathway towards economic empowerment. And once you address that, then you also address very many other health issues and even social issues. Because once you empower a girl, she's able to actually deal with all those other matters to do with health of herself, her children, and she also has the um, freedom to be able to um, provide for her family, as well as also make some decisions on her own. My experience here has been uh, very eye-opening, um, particularly in um, experiencing the model that PS Kenya has developed um, and seeing that in action. Um, it's been really insightful to see how they've also engaged with um, the men and influencers in these women's lives to help change behavior and to em empower the young women in this community. The goal of this learning-based project has been to learn how the new innovations around integrated, adolescent and youth sexual reproductive health and economic empowerment may help young mothers feel more empowered to make decisions about not just their reproductive health goals, but their futures, their finances, and possible career paths. They're going to break the cycle. In the next generation, I mean, these young mothers are going to teach their kids about, you know, birth control, family planning, you know, really like just getting out of that cycle and, and, and pover of poverty, you know, and, and also just kind of understanding that there are other possibilities.